Hey guys, I've been thinking of doing a uh, walkthrough um, of a different nature for some time and I thought that this question would be good. So question 34 from the ASA GAMSAT practice questions. If you've got the older PDF, the front cover is kind of a red orange, okay? So I'll get you to open that up um, before we continue with this video just so they can follow along. Okay, before we get to this video, it's a bit of a different format for what I usually do. On the left-hand side, we have our train of thought. It's kind of like where we keep all the things that we discover and also a bit of our working out. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to be showing extracts from the question and I'll be asking kind of little quiz questions about them which are gonna help us to discover what the question's asking and also what we could potentially do to solve the problem. So instead of me telling you, I'm get, going to get you to uh, try to answer these questions as we go. Okay, hopefully you find this useful. So this is an extract from the actual question and um, it's from the actual question stem. If the Frode number of the moving dinosaur depicted in figure two were 20 and L were 0.2 meters, its stride length would be of the following closest two. So the question for you is, which of the following best sums up the question? What is the Frode number? Will the dinosaur move? Or what is the stride length? I'll give you a few seconds to have a little think. If you have to, you can pause the video, but Really, these questions shouldn't take you too long, okay? Okay, if you said, what is the stride length, you'd be correct. There's um, a few hints in the actual question itself, uh, especially when it says, its stride length would be. Okay, that's definitely asking about the stride length. Looking at the answer options, we have 0 0.7 meters, 1.4 meters, 2.1 meters, and 2.8 meters. What do you think they want us to know about the stride length? Okay, is it asking us to compare it to the Frode number? Is it asking what the numerical value is? Is it asking if there's any evidence that dinosaurs had stride lengths? What do you think? Again, I'll give you a couple of seconds. Yep, don't overthink it guys. We are looking for the numerical value. So the answer options are numbers and they've got units. We are trying to figure out their, the numbers, essentially. The units in meters though, keep that in mind because with the next question, it'll be useful. Okay, here we've got another extract from the stimulus. I'm not gonna read it. I'll get you to have a, a read yourself. And specifically, I want you to figure out what exactly are we looking for? Okay, are we looking for S? S on L or V. Remember, looking at our train of thought, we are trying to figure out the stride length and also we're trying to figure out its numerical value. Okay, that's why we're looking for the symbols because maybe that'll help us to figure out what equation we're going to use or, or what other um, information we might need to use. Okay, so what do you think? Look, are we looking for S? Are we looking for S on L or V? Okay, given that we're looking for the stride length, S is the symbol we're looking for. Okay, in the extract above, S is stride length in meters. So the units are also useful in confirming uh, for us that S is the thing that we're interested in. Okay, we'll keep on going. Okay, we're coming back to the question stem now. Now, which of the following best translates the text above? Is it saying, L is equal to 20 and S is equal to 0 0.2? Or is it saying the third number is 20, S is equal to 0 0.2? Or is it saying the third number is 20 and L is equal to 0 0.2? Okay, have a read, which of these options is the best? Okay, it says that the third number of the moving dinosaur depicted in figure two were 20. So the third number is 20 and it says L were 0 0.2 meters. So it's saying L is equal to 0 0.2 meters. Let's keep on going. This is an equation that appears in the question. Now, bear in mind, we're looking for S and we have third number and L. Is this equation useful? Okay, 
and give you a bit of time. What do you think? Does that look useful to us? No, unfortunately, this is not a useful equation because we're looking for S and S is nowhere to be found. Okay, so we'll keep on going. Maybe there's some information in the stimulus that might be more relevant. How about figure two? Given that we're looking for S, we have the Frode number and L, is this figure useful? Unfortunately, it is not. I mean, it does have S and it does have L in it. However, it's not really that useful if we're trying to find the values. Okay, remember, that's the whole point of this question. We want to find the stride length and we're looking for the, nu the numerical value. So that's not going to be useful. Also, it doesn't have any references to Frode number. Okay, not useful for our purposes. How about figure one? Does this look useful? Yes, it is definitely useful because it has S and L. If you look at the Y axes, there's references to both S and L. And on the X axis, we have the Frode number. So all of the things that we either are looking for or we have are on this figure, okay? This figure is most likely our best, uh, best place to, to go to, okay? What can we do with figure one, given that we know the Frode number is 20? There's a few things we could do. We could let V squared over GL equals to 20, or we could try to get a value for the, the relative stride length by reading off the graph at X equals to 20. Okay, what do you guys think? We've got two options here. Which one is the best path? Alright, let's get a value for the relative stride length by reading off the graph at x equals to 20 or the Frode number of 20. Uh, not only is reading off the graph easier, but it's going to get us closer to the answer because remember we're looking for s, okay? So reading off the relative stride length might be useful, that's related to s. If we substitute it into the equation v squared over gl is equal to 20, which is the definition of the Frode number, we're not going to be able to solve for S. Okay, reading off the graph at a Frode number of 20, what is the relative stride length? This shouldn't take you long, guys. Just looking off the screen. Do you think it's closest to two, five, or seven? Okay, we're, we're reading a value of 20 from the Frode number. What relative stride length? Okay. The closest is seven. Let's keep on going. Which of the following is the best translation of relative stride length is seven? Is it seven on L is relative stride length, S on seven is relative stride length, or S on L is equal to seven? What do you guys think? Okay, we're translating the words into math, essentially. S on L is equal to seven. That's the best translation because relative stride length is S on L according to the Y axis, the label. Uh, the word is can be translated to equals and then seven. Okay, S on L is equal to seven or relative stride length is seven. What can we do with the fact that L is equal to 0 0.2 meters? Should we substitute that number into V squared over GL equals to 20, or should we substitute it into S over L equals to seven? I've got a feeling you guys already know the answer, so it shouldn't take too long. Let's substitute it into S over L equals to seven. Okay, again, it's got to do with what the question's asking. We determined earlier on, we're looking for S. That's probably the best way forwards. So now we have S over 0 0.2 is equal to seven. What is the next step? Okay, so this is where we need to rearrange the equation. Is it S is equal to seven plus 0 0.2, S equals to seven minus 0 0.2, S equals seven times 0 0.2, or S equals seven divided by 0 0.2? Okay, what do you guys think? 
I'll give you a, a moment to work this out. If you have a pen and paper, you can use that as well. Okay, it's s equals to 7 times 0 0.2 because in the original equation we have s divided by 0 0.2 and if we want to rearrange it, we want to do the opposite operation. The opposite of division is multiplication, so that's why you multiply both sides by 0 0.2 so that you can get s by itself. Okay, what is 7 times 0 0.2? I've given a couple of options. It could be 0 0.35, 3.5, 1.4, or 14. What do you guys think? Okay, 7 times 0 0.2. Okay, I'm not going to go into the math, but it is 1.4. Okay, 7 times 0 0.2 is 1.4. And now we're very close. Going back to the answer options, which of the answer options is closest to our answer of 1.4? And it is B. So we've got to the answer. I hope you can see that to get to the answer, we had to follow a lot of little steps. Each individual step wasn't difficult though. Okay, but you have to remember that a lot of steps, a lot of reasoning has to happen for you to correctly solve a GAMSAT style question. I hope you like this format. Please let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do a similar video for other questions. Um, otherwise, if you didn't like it, you can let me know as well, you know, if you want me to just go back to what I, I used to do. And I'd really appreciate it if you liked this video and subscribed. Uh, it really, really helps. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.